storing energy from light and elsewhere in gradients across a membrane. Many biological systems store energy in gradients across membranes. To get an idea of how this works, we're going to consider one of the simplest of these systems, the purple membrane of holobium. This is the plasma membrane of the cell that contains the protein bacteria rhodopsin. Bacteria rhodopsin can absorb visible light, and when it absorbs that light, hydrogen ions from the inside of the cell are translocated to the outside, to the extracellular space. This leads to the formation of a hydrogen ion gradient across the membrane. At the same time that this hydrogen ion gradient is forming, there's also an electrical field generated by the charge separation between the hydrogen ion and the hydroxyl ions. Both the hydrogen ion gradient and the electric field begin to oppose the movement of hydrogens across the membrane even in the presence of light. At the same time, both the electric field and the hydrogen ion gradient act to drive hydrogen ions through the membrane from the outside to the inside of the cell, assuming that there is a hydrogen channel in the membrane. Now let's look at how an electrochemical gradient can drive chemical reactions. If we start at the ground state, the movement of a hydrogen ion out of the cell is an, is an unfavorable reaction. But we can make it favorable by adding energy. Light can be used to drive the movement of hydrogen ions out of the cell. And this reaction is catalyzed by the protein bacterial rhodopsin. Because all of the bacterial rhodopsin molecules are oriented in the same direction in the membrane, the movement of hydrogen ions is directional in the presence of light. The end result will be a hydrogen ion gradient with hydrogen ion concentration outside higher than the hydrogen ion concentration inside. Now we're going to take this hydrogen ion gradient, this electrochemical gradient, and we're going to couple it to the formation of ATP from ADP and phosphate, which is itself an unfavorable reaction. The final reaction will be ADP plus phosphate plus the movement of a hydrogen ion from the outside of the cell into the cell, leading to the formation of ATP. This reaction is catalyzed by the ATP synthase. And again, the ATP synthase molecules are all oriented in the membrane in the same direction. We can start thinking about how this system behaves by using a little toy model. Here's a cell that has only the bacterial rhodopsin molecule in its membrane and the ATP synthase in its membrane. In the absence of light, the hydrogen ion concentration across the membrane is equal on both sides. When we turn the light on, hydrogen ion concentration outside begins to rise. And it will rise up until the time that it is opposed by the equal and opposite force of the electrochemical gradient formed by the movement of the hydrogen ions. As the electrochemical gradient forms, it can now start to drive the formation of ATP. If we follow the movement of ATP in the cell, we'll see that ATP synthesis lags behind the increase in the hydrogen ion gradient. It's pretty simple to understand why. It takes a while in the presence of the light to generate an electrochemical gradient, a hydrogen ion gradient, large enough to drive the unfavorable ATP synthesis reaction. Now we can follow the behavior of the system once we turn the light off. Immediately after the light turns off, hydrogen ions still go through the ATP synthase, so their ion concentration gradient starts to dissipate. Hydrogen ions move from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. But ATP synthesis continues as long as there's enough energy in the electrochemical gradient to drive the ATP synthesis reaction. Now you should be able to predict how the system will behave if there are open hydrogen ion channels in the membrane from the beginning. Aha!